from Crema Media in Johannesburg. This is the Real Economy Report. Aeronautical engineering company Marenko South Africa recently completed a flight simulator to assist with the accuracy of various flight projects. Anine Vermeulen has the story. Marenko Engineering Technologies Africa's aeronautical engineer James Reeves was involved in the written specifications of the software for the flight simulator. He advised that the helicopter controls be replaced with a joystick, where the use of text to command the model is now fed directly through the joystick. The model has been adjusted so that it runs in real time in order to create a complete physical model of the helicopter being flown by a pilot, which increases learning capability. It is based on software called Flight Lab, which is a commercial sort of flight vehicle helicopter analysis software package that we use for designing the Marenko Swiss helicopter. And that's very powerful. It's, we can model the blades in finite elements and put pro proper aerodynamics on it. We have proper inflow models. We can model the engine model. We can model the proper controls. We can model the tail rotor. So it's really complete and we use that for giving the Swiss feedback on loads and tweaking the design of the helicopter. The company has also constructed a wind tunnel on its premises, where various aircraft components are tested under strict scientific conditions. We started building this probably a year ago and it's, we finished it very recently. And well, we like to do a lot of CFD here, which is computational fluid dynamics. And we have a nice famous saying that is, knowing the answer improves any calculation. So the only way to know the answer is to do a physical test. So we built a wind tunnel to do physical tests of the things we design. So at the moment it's got a tail rotor model in it, which I've designed basically using CFD a few years ago, and now we're just checking that the results were what, they, what we expected them to be, and it turns out it was really good. Other news making headlines this week. Socialism leads to poor investments that deprive citizens of services, says Russian defector Yuri Maltsev. U.S. Carthage College Professor Yuri Maltsev says socialism leads to poor investment of public funds, depriving the most vulnerable people of valuable services. Why central planning cannot work? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Well, it cannot work on theoretical kind of well, for theoretical reason that you cannot centralize information. To have central planning, you need to centralize information. Uh, planning by itself is not bad. I mean, you plan your time. I plan my time. Everybody's planning something, whatever. Uh, people are planning how many books they would publish and whatnot. So this kind of planning, private planning, is all right. It's central planning which is bad because you cannot centralize information because you can, you sometimes you will go to the mall, for example, and then you, you will buy something that you never planned to, to buy. So how would, how would the central planner would know how much to produce how many things to produce, and this is uh, planning was a, was an exercise in, in futility, because can you imagine to plan for say Soviet Union was 300 million people, how to plan shoes production for example, what kind of shoes you like, what kind of what kind of uh, sizes, because uh, shoes are not interchangeable, right? There's plenty of other things, so we make trillions and trillions of economic decisions a day. And then to replace all these decisions with central planning decisions, that means to deprive you of choices and then, and then impose choices of the planner on you. That's Crema Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insights into South Africa's real economy.